Hi everybody. So it's been a while since we've done an update and there's been a lot going on and uh, we're about to hit a, a new milestone. So we wanted to kind of give you a walkthrough of what we've been up to. So let me turn this around and show you what the bus looks like right now. And then I'll show you what Patrick is working on. So um, we did a lot of footage of the roof raise and uh, by the time you see this, the roof raise video might be out already. Uh, but just in case it's not, there will be a roof raise video uh, coming out. But you can see that uh, since the roof raise, we have started reskinning the bus and we are almost finished reskinning. Uh, Patrick, who is right here, Hi. <laughs> is what are you working on right now, sweetie? I am uh, riveting the rib at the very last, the, the last panel on the driver's side, mm -hmm. the very last rib. I'm riveting the sheet metal to that. Yeah. So basically, what you see here, I'm doing yeah. a so video he's on doing the other these, side at the end. These ends, yeah. So um, one thing that uh, we learned <laughs> during our skinning is, well, first I'll just say, we measured many times. There's the like, you know, measure twice, cut once. We probably measured how many times? Uh, two or three times. At least. Three or four. Yeah. Do you want to tell them what happened? No. No, I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well, it's entirely my fault, so I may as well. I measured. The, sh the panels were too big to fit. Um, they're, they were like six inches or so or so too large. They would come down to here from where we have them up there. So we knew we needed to cut them. And I measured quite a few times to make sure I had it right. Marked it on the sheet metal. We had them all stacked so we could cut it all at once. And you may have seen the short on the YouTube channel. Oh yeah. So I marked it and I think, and I used a, a, a circular saw with the metal cutting blade, which did the job just fine. But I, I, I marked the line and I, th I think where I was off, I should have cut on the other side of the line mm. rather than the one I did cut on. As I wound up, it wound up being a little bit well, you can see right here what it's, happens. It's a bit short. So that's that's where the beam is. These 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 holes should be down here. Yeah. So we basically needed an additional two, I don't know, maybe three inches, something like that, depending on how. Yeah, we could have gone down anyway. An inch could have done it. And point point being is that it's, it's short, and it doesn't matter. It's a life lesson. It doesn't matter whose fault it is. What I told Patrick is. It's also my responsibility to check his measurements. It's also his responsibility to check my measurements. So we're both we're in this together. So we should be, you know, we're both responsible for this. There's also an important life lesson in this. Okay. It's that you can make mistakes and you can recover from those mistakes. Yeah. And learn from them. Yes. So that's what we're doing. We, we've got a plan. So the, the good news is there there is no like oh my God, we just ruined the whole bus. <laughs> that just doesn't exist. There's always a way to fix our errors. So what we decided to do was we riveted, you'll see there are rivets. This is the back passenger side corner. And um, you see that we stopped riveting um, a few inches from the bottom. And we have the strips of sheet metal that Patrick cut off of these uh, that are just laying around doing nothing. So we are going to fit those strips underneath and um, we will rivet them to the holes that are already there. And then we will put a second rivet into the bus because the holes that are already there won't go into the bus. So on the bottom, there will be a row of two. And um, then we're just gonna sick of flex the crap out of it. <laughs> we bought a bunch of butyl tape, but it's too cold and the butyl tape wasn't holding and it was just a pain in the butt. So we scrapped the butyl tape. And so it's just like a lot of riveting. And um, then we will sick of flex the inside. We'll do whatever, you know, um, water sealant we need to do to make sure that no water will get in. We're more just concerned right now with getting everything up. Um, the last piece to go on is this single window and then the transition. The transition is going to be its own project, which we're not too, too worried about at the moment. Right now we're just trying to get the interior mostly closed up and then we'll, the, um, we'll deal with the transition and talk about that a bit more later. Um, if you did see that 
uh, short on Instagram of Patrick cutting. What we did was we had some pallet wood and some just, you know, random scrap wood laying around. And we put all eight sheets of, of sheet metal down on the ground. And he cut that strip off. And then we measured and we cut. You can see here that the holes uh, on three sides are already cut. Um, that made it a lot easier once we put it up. So we didn't have to measure and drill while we were putting it up. So that was really nice. Um, another thing to, I guess, show is that we checked out this uh, come along from, we have a tool library in our neighborhood. And so um, this come along along with some uh, ratchet straps, which I'll show you here. The interior is very messy right now, but that's okay. Um, so these ratchet straps, <laughs> Patrick is drilling. Anyway, the ratchet straps and the come along are how we lifted the sheet metal. Okay. Okay, pause. I'm going to ratchet this one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, baby. Hi, Instagram. <laughs> if you're curious about the sheet metal, it's 18 gauge. Uh, we ordered 11 foot by 5 foot. So we didn't want to have to put up like each window separately. And so um, each sheet is covering two window holes, except for this last one, which is just one window hole. Um, and I can't remember the total price, but it was somewhere between two and three thousand dollars for all of it. But that's basically the walls of our house. So we felt like, you know, that's not too bad. We're also going to have a little bit left over to give to a friend who's doing a car project and just some scrap for us as we, uh, you know, make repairs along the way. So that's not too bad. Um, I, I think that is pretty much it for now. Uh, Patrick is up on the scaffold, finishing the driver's side riveting, and I'm about to help with the next stage after that. Bye, baby! <laughs> so there's a, one more thing that I forgot that's kind of exciting that makes us feel like a milestone, and that is the fact that for months and months, all of this has been open to the elements, and today I strung these uh, like construction site lights, which is pretty exciting. Um, the bus is a huge mess. There are leaves all over the floor. It's pretty gross in here. It's been wet and disgusting. I mean, we live in Oregon, so the winters are are wet, but it feels really good to have come to this point where we actually need light again. <laughs> I've got this little uh, gooseneck light on my neck and um, yeah, so we're very close to being to the point where we're gonna be working on the interior. And one of the first interior steps is probably our last big demo thing, which is to uh, tear out all the floors. So in a traditional schoolie, like a school bus build, the floors, once you get down to the like sort of base floor, is usually metal. That's not the case here. You can you can see that these floors are wood and they're all rotting and stuff. And underneath these floors is our really big luggage bays, which is kind of cool. What that means is our interior house floors are not going to be 
open to the ground underneath. They're gonna be open to the luggage base. And so we can actually insulate inside the house and inside the luggage bay to give ourselves like a little more insulation and protection from the elements. So um, that's kind of exciting to see that, um, yeah, we're not gonna be really putting anything on the exterior, like water tanks or anything like that. None of it's gonna be on the exterior. It's all gonna be in the luggage bays, which is one of the things we really love about building our tiny house in a coach. So I think that's all for now. Um, we're excited to share this update because it feels like, you know, we're moving along. We are about a year and a half into our build. Um, our, our bus sits 35 minutes away from where we live and we are able to work on it between one and four days a week, depending on our, you know, work schedules and other things that are going on in life and weather and stuff like that. So it's taken us some time, but we're pretty confident that um, over the next year and a half, we will be close enough to finish that we can probably live in it. Let's knock on, knock on wood, because <laughs> uh, as soon as I say that, maybe I'm cursing myself, who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back with an update soon.